It is really hard as a full-time eBay reseller to step away from the business, but I had to. Just last week, I went over to Perth for five days. It was my mate's wedding. I was the best man. I had no choice but to go. There was a lot of anxiety about my eBay business back home. I wanted to make sure the sales would keep coming in. And uh, I've got some numbers here to show you. I guess a little bit of a different approach this time around to actually taking some time away. I went to the States earlier this year. I did a big thrifting trip uh, and I went away for 10 days and I went on the eBay time away mode feature. Now those results, I documented those in a previous video. It was a 50% fall in sales. So half of what I normally do basically. I didn't want that for the five days that I was going to Perth. So I thought, well, what other way can I get around this process? So I actually didn't tell eBay. I didn't do the time away mode feature. All I did based on the feedback that I've received from eBay on the fact that you don't need to be listing every day to be selling every day is I just shift, uh, shifted my shipping and handling. So the shipping and handling went to three days to account for the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday that I was away. And then I had Saturday and Sunday, which was the weekend. There was no shipping, so that was fine. So it was just turning my one day shipping and handling into three days and then pretending like I'm still here working away and just not listing for those five days either. So no listing and a longer shipping and handling time. What actually happened to my sales? Well, if we have a look at the numbers, I was over those five days able to do $946 in revenue. It was a fall by about 23%. But if you remember, obviously my America trip was 50% fall. This was actually a much better setup. Now, obviously it was half the time. It was only five out of the 10 days that I was away when I was in the USA but I still think that it was just a better result not to do the time away mode feature, shift the shipping and handling up to three days, which was my scenario. If I was going away for four, five, six, seven days, I would just shift um, the shipping and handling out even further. And I actually think that it has a, had a better effect on my sales. So really happy to see those numbers come through, $946. Uh, since then, over the last weekend that we've just had, since I've been back listing and getting back into the normal routine, uh, I've had some pretty good numbers. I don't exactly know what the overall numbers are. We're gonna slowly accumulate them throughout this video today. And if we can hit $1,200 worth of revenue over the course of the three-day period for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, well, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. All right, guys, so for this first sale, I actually need your thoughts in the comments below. I've had a sale come through for six items, which is awesome. He was based out of the US and every single one of my US listings has either sort of 20 to $25 worth of shipping per item. He's bought six and without sending me a message, he's gone ahead and paid for international postage on every single one of those items. So I've had four hats sell, I've had a Cards for Bogans board game or card game sell, and then an LA Galaxy uh, David Beckham t-shirt. Now, that all worked out to $165 worth of sales, but he's gone ahead and paid $140 in international postage. And I'm about to put it all into a box and send it off. I'm gonna let you know in a second what the postage works out to, but because I haven't received a message and he's gone ahead and paid, I think the postage is gonna probably get, gonna be like $20, $25 to send it all off to him. So I don't know what to do. I've, I've pocketed an extra $120 and what I really need to. Um, but yeah, anyway, these four hats, board game, t-shirt. It was an epic sale. It was awesome to see it come through, but I just don't know what the moral or the right thing to do is. Let me know. So it's worked out to $37.28, which means he's technically overpaid his postage by $102. It wasn't the only hat sale that we had come through. This VB racing hat has gone on to sell as well. So $22.50 was the sale price. And I'm always selling my hats. I just love them. And these VB sort of beer related racing hats, I'm always picking up. You can see here, super cheap order. I've got that one to sell as well. It's a category and a style of hat that I like to grab. And the sell-through rate is usually pretty good. So it's not a huge sale, but $22.50. I didn't think that was too bad. Now, we did have this beauty sell, which I picked up in a private pick a couple of weeks ago when I was in Melbourne. My good mate, Scott, he's a 30% club member, and I know that he's watching this video. So Scott, hope you're doing well, mate. Uh, I picked up this Geelong jersey off him, and it was a signed Tom Harley, uh, and it was also the coach, uh, Bomber Thompson, as well. So fully signed, and I've got the authentication slip here as well. So uh, fully authenticated. I paid, I think I paid about 50 bucks for it in that video. It's got all of the playing list of the 2009 Premiership team on the back as well. So a true collector's piece, this one. Uh, we've got a best offer come through for $200. I had it sitting up for about $250 for a couple of months, and with the cat's just winning the premiership, I thought this one would move pretty quickly. And then sure enough, a week or two after the grand final, $200 sale. So Scott, thank you very much. That was an absolutely ripping turnaround.
I was also really pleased to see that this Duke jumper sold as well. This was a part of my really bad wholesale purchase that I made well over a year ago now. These jumpers have been sitting up in my store for a really long time. I paid $15 a piece and they just haven't been selling. They're wholesale straight out of the USA. I gave it a try with a local supplier based out of Sydney and it just hasn't worked. I haven't got even my money back yet. It's been a real slog. This one here though, it's a Fruit of the Loom. It's a size medium. Duke, really big college over there in the States. So no wonder this was sold. I actually got a $36.10 sale price, which I thought was actually really impressive because I've pretty much been selling them off for what I paid for them. All of these uh, Cronulla Sharks cards sold as well. In total, it was a, a complete set of 10 and uh, it was the 1988 Scanlon's cards. I've actually got a whole heap of them right here that I'm trying to sell. It's a big mixed bag. I've got a lot of the 88 Scanlon cards there. They're listed. All of these other cards aren't listed. So it's a bit of a tricky process, but these ones just here went for 20 bucks. And I picked all of these cards up at an op shop for $20. So I've done really well here to get all my money back basically on this set alone. So there is a lot of money in these things. They are just tedious and time consuming and they aren't huge average sale price sort of sales. But I'll put a bit of uh, cardboard on each side, front and back, and then I'll put it into an envelope and send that off. And that should be delivered okay. We had three pairs of shoes sell as well, which was awesome. And I really want to have a chat to you about these because there are a couple of brands that you should be looking for because they always move for me. Now, New Balance here, these 247s, they have gone on to sell for 35 bucks. I didn't even clean them, as you can see there. Could have probably got a few more dollars if I presented them a little bit better. So that's a lesson learned. I should be paying more attention to my cleaning prior to listing. I just want to get them up and sold, you know? So best offer there um, was 35. I probably could have got about 45 if I'd done a bit more work on them. These are a fair fantastic pair of newies. Now they aren't, they are actually really clean these ones. They just have an older look about them. These are the classics. These are the 1300 made in USA. If I can just show you that, there it is there on the tag. Hey, these shoes right here, these kind of retro casual slash running trainer joggers, whatever they are, these sorts of uh, newies, they just sell really well. They're becoming a really popular trendy shoe out there for people. And I've seen that only sort of develop in the last sort of six to 12 months. So these shoes, another pair of newies, the 247s, now these ones here, the 1300s. Um, we've got a $70 sale price on that one there, and they're also off to the USA as well. So an extra 20 bucks worth of shipping. So $90 worth of revenue uh, for those really good New Balance. I've also got these guys. These are the Arahi 2s, the Hoka running shoes. Look, the condition isn't immaculate. There's definitely some wear there. They also don't even have their insoles as well, which I spoke about, but they've ended up selling on a best offer for $59. The biggest thing with these are you just want to make sure that there's no fabric tears uh, anywhere on the top sole there. So look, they are really good. They're a good pair of shoes. Um, they've still got a lot of life left in them. I bought them pretty cheap and I'm selling them for 59 bucks. So uh, Hoka's New Balance, two brands that I'm seeing move really quite well at the moment on eBay. All right, time to have a look at the video game sales. We had Speed Freaks. Now, all of these PS1 games is actually the games that I picked up with Cal when I was over in Perth just last week. So I actually had a whole lot more games than what you can see here. They have been selling very, very well. Uh, Speed Freaks, though, was one of Cal's games, and we ended up getting a $25 sale price for that one there. Let me know in the comments below if you used to play that game. Apparently, it was a good one. I never got to play it. The other one as well is Resident Evil on Nintendo Wii. This one here I got off Cal as well, and we got a $20 sale price there. So as you can see, guys, I've got a lot of video games. I'm buying more and more as we go, and I'm really trying to fill up as many video game sales as possible. Um, so nice to get those two out the door for 45 bucks. I sold this Guitar Hero guitar as well. Um, look, they do sell pretty well, 40 bucks. It didn't even have a dongle and it was still able to sell. So uh, really cool items to pick up. They are just the worst things to ship off though. So I don't know exactly know how I'm gonna do this. Uh, it'd be actually really cool to get your thoughts, even though I'll have to work it out myself for this one, uh, for my next guitar, how to best package this. Uh, I'm thinking of just giving it some really good uh, bubble wrap and maybe even some butcher's paper and just leaving it there. Let me know if you think I should put it into a box. This Bet Midler CD as well, I've had it in my store for about a year. We got an $18.99 sale price on that one there. I'll put a bit of bubble wrap around that one and put it into a small satchel. Just going upstairs now for the last set of sales and it's all of the DVD sales, my favorite category, the category that I sell the most of. And I've got this big room in here, which is all of my sort of my media. Um, look at this big wall there of DVDs. I, I, I love this category. It just turns into some really good money. Um, I want to show you these first up. There's four sales that have come through through my Big W uh, raid. I went out to the Big W outlets and uh, I bought all of these brand new DVDs for $4 a piece. If you haven't seen that video, here's a little screen grab. Go and find it on my channel. Um, but check out these sales here. 
So they're all brand new and sealed. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were paid $4. That one sold for $14.50. These two Pokemons, Collection 1 and 2 of the Sun and Moon Ultra Adventures, it sold for $35 plus $20 worth of international postage. Off to the USA, that one. This one here is crazy, guys. We've got $45 plus $20 internationally for just Season 7 of Offspring. I paid $15 for it at Big W, and we got a 45 plus 20 turnaround. And that sold in about, all of these sales have come through within about two to three weeks of buying them. Uh, and then this one here as well. These were $4 a piece. We've got Hulk Season 1 and Season 2. And they sold for $45 as a little bundle there as well. I'll show you in a second how I send off my uh, my two DVD purchases uh, in the mail. But um, yeah, $165 worth of sales there from Big W. And I only paid 35 bucks. There were a few more sales as well. I was able to sell Heartbeat Season 11 here. And this one sold for $42.50, which was just crazy. Um, this one here, Upstairs, Downstairs. I've got every single episode, 1 to 5, Season 1 to 5 there. That one sold for $50. So I'll put that one into a small satchel. And that one should be fine. And then this one here as a little consolation prize, House of Wax for $10. All right, so that's pretty much everything, but there is one more, the holy grail that I've saved for the very end of this What Sold. You guys might have remembered it from a previous episode just about a week or two ago, ER. I bought it in an op shop for $2 a piece. I've got $30 worth of sale. Actually, no, a dollar a piece. I paid $15 for this every single episode of ER and it sold for $202.50. That is just ridiculous. If that sale right there doesn't tell you to go and buy DVDs, nothing will. So a pretty decent weekend worth of eBay sales, guys. Over $1,300. Uh, things are ticking along really well. I did say that if we got over $1,200 that I would have a surprise for you. Well, here it is. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Say hello. Well done for hitting your sales. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Boink. I just think the Cocker Spaniels are the best breed of dog. She is the nicest thing in the world, and I feel like I should get one at some point. Maybe next year, who knows. Um, actually, if I was to get a dog, what should I name it? I want to start getting some dog name suggestions. Not that I'm getting one. I'm not getting one. I'd just be curious to see what you guys might think is a good dog name. Um, this video right here, guys, I was in Perth last week. This was a crazy thrift trip that I did. Bought a whole heap of stuff that I'm selling on eBay right now. If you're into your thrifting content, go and check that one out. 15,000 subscribers by Christmas is the goal. Help me get there by hitting the subscribe button, guys. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you soon.